It's day two of the Dublin Racing Festival and this is Good Morning Dublin, live from Leopardstown. I'm David Jennings and I'm glad to say we've added a bit of glamour to the panel this morning, lads. We've got the one, the only, Miss Nina Carberry. How are you? Good, thanks, David. Good. And uh, Kevin O'Ryan and a very, 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 very tender Paul Keeley. <laughs> Are you okay? We'll talk right. low for you, I'll okay? Get there. I'll get there. A good day yesterday? Very good. Thoroughly enjoyable. Yes. My only winner was at Sandown, but uh, it was a good one. So, uh, uh, on to the next day. Now, obviously, huge crowd here yesterday, over 18,000. A fantastic atmosphere. How was it for you? You were able, like, we were, we were working. We were working hard in press rooms, and Kevin was manning the parade ring. But uh, for you that was actually able to enjoy it in the middle of the crowd, and you were in the middle of it, how did you enjoy it? Uh, I can't believe you're going to ask me to try and remember anything. <laughs> it's unfair, isn't it? No, it was great. I mean, we wandered around from bar to bar. There's loads of people around. Everyone enjoyed themselves. Really relaxed atmosphere. Um, can't beat it. And Nina Carberry, it's great to have you here. Thank you. You're a Dancing with the Stars champion. <laughs> uh, your career, everybody will probably know you from your career in the saddle that's watching the show this morning. But your, uh, your career on television has just rocketed, so it has. Uh, <laughs> Dancing with the Stars for you. I'd imagine it was a, a fantastic couple of weeks. Yeah, and a couple of weeks, couple of months. Was it? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was a, a relentless uh, show, but um, we got to the end of it. But it was a, I got a brilliant um, support from the, the racing industry as well. So that kind of kept me in every week. I was kind of praying to be out, out of it, to be honest. But anyway, <laughs> we were voted to win and we, we went all the way. So I was delighted to be part of it. Now, not only is Nina Cabri a brilliant dancer, a brilliant jockey, but she's also a brilliant tipster. And that's why she's here. So look forward to Nina's nuggets See? later on the show. Kevin O'Ryan, fantastic day yesterday. What was your highlight? Uh, there were so many, to be fair. You know, the, I think that just the atmosphere here, over 18,000 people. I can't remember as crowded big in Leperstown in many, many years. I thought there were some great results there. I thought the last winner, there was a great story behind that. Brian Gleeson uh, and his wife Claire, they bred the horse, they raced the dam, Hikari. Uh, they bred the jockey, obviously, John Gleeson yeah. as well. And John Kiley, one of the proper legends of Irish racing. And uh, we hadn't seen her since, what, June time? Yeah. When uh, winning a winner's bumper at Roscommon absolutely bolted up, it did yesterday, and pulled well clear of, uh, of Willie's back in second. But it was a great, great... Great story, John Kiley, as I said, the Gleeson family too. Good land, very important to see Barry Connell. He's having some season, 13 winners, uh, two grade one winners and good land. He was very good and Michael O'Sullivan really making a name for himself. Ice cool as well and galloping the champ. What can we say about him? He was absolutely bold. Right, no sitting on the fence here now, okay? No sitting on the fence, right? Will galloping the champs win the Cheltenham Gold Cup, Paul Keeley? I'm, I'm more inclined to say he's more likely to. I think it's quite funny, actually, because a couple of bookmakers pushed him out. Yeah, including our sponsors, think, Paddy Power. I what were you doing? Think, I, think he showed, I think he showed that he definitely stays. I think he also showed that he's not quite the superstar we thought he was when he won the first time up. But he showed that he can battle. He showed that he stays. And I think he's, still, he's the most likely winner. I'll back against him. I have backed against him because he's short <coughs> enough. But I do mm. think he's the most likely winner. Right, Kevin, we went into yesterday thinking, you know, Gallop in the Shams is this sexy kind of heart... Like, the, ste the steeplechase and equivalent of Sprinter Sacra, let's just say, or the stay in division, certainly. And we wanted to see what would he find under pressure. Would he stay? Would he hit the line hard? So he did everything that people wanted him to do that we hadn't seen before. And yet people are still finding fault in him. Yeah, I can't understand it. I can't understand why people are worried about whether he'd stay yesterday or not. Well, I said it yesterday in the morning. I said, I've no doubt this horse is going to stay. He won a novice, a grade one novice over three miles of Punchestown over hurdles a couple of seasons ago. I thought yesterday what was brilliant about him yesterday was Paul has dropped him in. They wanted to teach him a little bit, try and get him to settle and switch off, which he did. He actually raced a little bit behind the bridle yesterday. And I thought that was a good sign. Just as from, what, two out. Peter Fahey's horse, the big dog, was running some race. Yeah, right. Lee came down two out. Paul just was a little bit behind the bridle. And just for a moment, you thought, maybe this horse might be slightly bit in trouble. But I think that's great because he has no trouble, no doubt he's going to stay up the hill in Cheltenham and uh, he does have a good turn of foot as well because he's hit the, he jumped the last he's winged the last and he's kept lengthening away to the line Fury Road probably didn't stay and Statler mm. ran a blinder he looked like he was going to get swallowed up he's a horse who obviously wants further as well but I couldn't I can't see why people are knocking uh, galloping the champ he's only beating he's Fury Road eight winning. lengths isn't he I mean it's not superstar form is it no, but all you can do is go and beat no, exactly. What do you want him to do, though? What do you want him to do? Go around and win no, 20 lengths well, in the bridle? I want him to do what he did. I have nothing left, exactly. Area. Like, you know, who's a far better horse than the ones he beat yesterday. You know what I mean? But he didn't do that at three miles. Similar enough, though, was it? 
But then you won the Gold Cup. He, he had to find. He had to. He had to work yesterday. He didn't. He didn't have to work at all when uh, first time up. And maybe mentally, he's getting he can more still win a Gold Cup. Well you don't need race. to be a superstar to win a Gold Cup. Mentally, he's out there probably maturing as well. He wasn't as gassy. He can be a little bit gassy in his races. I thought he switched off perfectly yesterday, and he was slick over his fences too. Because I, you know, I, listen, I in think the past, he's been the most likely winner. Yeah. I think he's the most likely winner of the Gold Cup. I don't think there's anything wrong. Just with get that. stuck in at whatever price is. You win the Gold Cup. Simple. Seven to four with Paddy Power. Yeah. Nick Adams comes from 11 to <laughs> Nina, if you were still riding and I could offer you any ride in the Gold Cup, who would you ride? Well, definitely the Galloping de Champ has shown. He's, I thought he was brilliant yesterday. Um, as Kevin said, he relaxed, and that's what you want in a Gold Cup. You need to relax. If he was keen yesterday and he bolted up and he looked unreal, but he didn't relax, he's probably not going to stay in Cheltenham. Mm. So to, yesterday was a great performance, and I think he kicked clear after the last when, when Paul really got stuck into him and that's what we, what we want to see and I was delighted with him at the last. David Russell's horse came across him and he showed experience by just popping and getting away from it. He could have easily backed down and fallen so um, he showed experience that way and uh, I think yeah he's the one. Right hands up I got the Irish article spectacularly wrong. Okay appreciated is not the best two mile novice chase in the Willie Mullins yard. It is El Fabiolo. Paul Keeley um, that is going to be some race between El Fabiolo and John Bond. It is going to be a fantastic race, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, he's very good. I mean, obviously, they raced against each other at Aintree and there was next to nothing in it then. And El, El Fabiolo had next to no experience at the time. So, yeah, it's going to be a really, really good race. He's definitely, you know, John Bond has definitely got a threat now. And I think that's what we needed yesterday's Irish Argyle to prove that, was a, that there's something to take him on. And we have now got that. He's a serious threat. And Banbridge is a serious threat for the Turners. That couldn't have gone any better for me. Yeah, just explain to viewers, uh, Paul Keeley, your, your thoughts on the novice chasing division, what you've done very early on in the season. Well, I mean, last April, after John Bond just held on from El Fabiolo, I backed him for the Turners. And then I backed Banbridge for the Turners. And of course, if Banbridge would have won yesterday, I'd have ended up with the first two in the betting for the Arkle in the Turners by mistake. But, you know, <laughs> so I've got it right now, because Banbridge is going to have, you know, as long as the ground is good, he's going to have a right chance in that race. Okay, excellent. And Some rest. we had a big upset in the Spring Juvenile Hurdle, Kevin. Gala the Marceau held off, lost him out. Obviously, Paul Townend knows it wasn't his finest hour, but the mental strength of Paul Townend, I wrote about this in the Racing Post today, to go out after lost him out, to pick the wrong one in the Arkle, to finish second last in the opener, and then to go out and ride the perfect race and gallop in the Champs, that separates the best from the rest. Yeah, definitely. You know, And obviously, Paul is in a... When you've got so many top-class horses to choose from in those races, it's a fine line and you know, you're always thinking you don't want to be on the wrong one, then you're doubting yourself if you are on the wrong, if the other one goes and wins. And it just goes, so that's why those guys uh, and ladies are at the top of their game because they can bounce back from those things. Uh, it was just a complete uh, messy race and obviously it was well documented. Stable Companion was coming back, absolutely wiped Paul out of it. He lost a lot of ground. Now Gallimar, so you have to give her plenty of credit because she was so free. The 12 Apostles wouldn't haul her halfway around yesterday. And I thought she was gone in Danny Mullins. And the sweat was running off her. And I thought, briefly coming to the last, right, Paul wings the last, he's going to go and win. Now, he had a lot of ground to make up. But Gallo de Marceau started to pull yeah. away again. Now, after being so, so free in the majority of the race, like you see at one stage, Danny Mullins actually breaks her jaw to break her stride to try and get her back in and get a bit of cover because she's so free. And for a filly to go and still put up the performance she did. I think she deserves to get a lot of credit, but two of them taking each other on triumph hurdle, I'd be kind of in the camp of Lassie about to turn the form around. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, she was a little bit unlucky, wasn't she? She did get knocked back to last and then have to come round. Um, there's obviously not very much between them, though. Mm. I think you can definitely say that. Um, the one thing is, this race is, the history of this race is a little bit horses you got beat here and we had them won the triumph yes. hurdle, isn't it? Yeah. Plenty of them. And, you know, it's, it's just, it was a shame for the, for the Richie horses, but it was their own owner mate that got in the way, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, the complete rag with no, no experience whatsoever. So, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I suppose Gala Marceau, can she go for the mares? Novice? Oh, oh dude, God. that is interesting. I'd imagine not she got the time, wouldn't she? Two different owners. Yeah. Yeah. Two live bullets that, and a triumph to win. She's got that option, hasn't she? Mm, she does. Like, you know, where, where, where was Lossie Mouth? I'd be surprised though if she doesn't go for the triumph, would you? Yeah. It'd be unusual to have the first or second in the betting for the triumph being, being uh, Phillies, wouldn't it? Would. Yeah. He's finished there, yeah. <laughs> He's finished there. You got to move on there. We got on with the show. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. yeah that was day one of the Dublin <laughs> Racing Festival. Let's move on to day two and we kick off at 110 with the Irish Stallion Farms. 
uh, EBF, Paddy Mullins, Mayor's Handicap Hurdle, just to get the name right. And currently, your favourite Kevin O'Ryan is Liberty Dance from the Gordon Elliott Stable, who is ridden by the jockey that you are agent for, Davy Russell. Will this be a winning favourite to start the card? Well, hopefully it will. This was obviously Davy's original last winner, wasn't it? It's confusing. It was, isn't it? Yeah. It gets a little bit confusing. Yeah. Uh, she was good when she won that listed hurdle. She's. Uh, She's definitely a, a smart filly on the upgrade as well. The only worry, though, is she has 11-9 on her back. She's a lot of weight to give away. But Gordon Elliott has a great record in this race. He's won two of the last three runnings of it. And uh, obviously, Black Tear, she went on and won the Mayor's Hurdle at Cheltenham, didn't she? After winning this race. She did. And Party Central's obviously a high-class filly as well. So, look, she sets a very good standard here. I think she's probably the most likely winner, but my... Worry is maybe slightly the, the weight that she's to carry. She's to give a lot of weight away. The fly in the item is 19, risk fell. She could be off a very, very dangerous mark. The only four-year-old in the race and handicap debut as well. She was a dual winner over hurdles in her native France. And she's two runs in Ireland so far have been in graded company. She could be off a very, very dangerous mark, risk fell. You're worrying me now about Liberty Dance because I was very, very sweet in Liberty Dance. No, I am very sweet in Liberty Dance. Don't get me You're wrong. You're not I'm tipping just, her though. She's given a she's given a lot of weight away. There's 23 in it. You know what I mean? The best the best mare in the race though. She is. Risk Bell though is dangerous though. She's given her a lot of weight away. Okay. Ten five Kev risk Bell. Kevin Orion. Debut. Yeah. We'll stick with Davy Russell. Go on. Liberty Dance. Yeah, but I don't think you mean it though. <laughs> I don't think you mean it. I think you're a risk Bell fan. I am a risk Bell fan. I just think she's off a very, very dangerous mark. Okay. Nina Cabri, what wins the opener? Yeah, Liberty Dance has been unbelievable the last two times, uh, listed company as well. Uh, there's a horse there that could be a bit of value. Rio, go, Rio got choice of Henry de Bromheads for Rachel Blackmore to try and get them off the mark before the big mare comes along. Um, she, she beat Liberty Dance. It, 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 she was fourth in, in Down Royal that day. Liberty Dance was behind her. I think the weight difference is going to be a lot more towards Rigo choice today and I feel that there's just a bit of value there at 16 to 1 or around that so I feel that Henry Bromhead's filly could run a big race today. See when you were out sinking points she was doing her homework. Oh, I did she was up I, studying form. I did all my study yesterday morning I knew exactly what I was doing so I'm all right. Can you I'm remember right it? That. I can yeah. I can, yeah. <laughs> but what wins the opening? Uh, well with Paddy's are going six places so I back Bantown girl each way because she almost never finishes out of frame. She was third in this race last year she travelled through it just as well as uh, as Party Central and obviously got left behind after the last but you know Party Central's 21 pound higher now I think the runner-up would be something similar higher once she gets a mark over fences because she's won one of the last two. Uh, and Bantown Girl's on the same mark. Um, she's obviously no superstar and, you know, there are going to be others in the race uh, who might have a bit more ahead of the handicapper, but she'll be in the frame. Kevin Ryan, you have your hand up there for the last few minutes. Yeah, another one there that, with the sixth place as well. Could be Ted Walsh's uh, Gweet Queel. We were just mm -hmm. chatting about it before on air. Uh, her first run in handicap company, she was third behind uh, Charles Burns's. Horse uh, Sea Light, Sea Moon, wasn't it? Uh, the horse yeah. that won here at the, and she was unlucky now. She wouldn't have won, but got she, hampered, she got badly. badly hampered. And Dennis O'Regan done well. He, he's clipped the heel, actually, no fault of Dennis's, and broke her stride. She wasn't beaten all that far. She finished third that day. But the six places, she could be a good each way. I bet to nothing. Great Quail of Ted Walsh's. I'm going to give something right at a massive price here that I think would run well. I think it's 50 to 1. Scenic Look, I think, will run well here for Adrian Murray. Was four to Maxim at Nav, and I don't think she quite got home that day. Back and trip here. She's 50 to 1. I'm not saying she'd win. I think she can finish in the first six. I was just disappointed with her on the flat at Dundalk yeah, a couple desperate, of weeks yeah. ago. And usually she's a filly who goes forward. She looked a bit lifeless that day. She missed the kick out of the gates and was always on the back foot. So, yeah, I'm just saying 50 to 1. I think it's a big price. But Liberty Dance for me, Bantown Girl, Bantown Girl yeah. Risk Bell, and Rioga Choice. For Nina Carberry, we're up and running. That is your opener on day two of the Dublin Racing Festival. Moving on to the 140. It is the first grade one of the day. It is the Labrooks Novice Chase, and it is a corker. It is literally Willie Mullins v Gordon Elliott. And currently, Mighty Potter is your five to four favorite against James de Berlay, Gallard de Manil, and all the Willie Mullins battalion. battalion. Paul Keeley, are you a Mighty Potter fan? Uh, it's hard not to be, because that was a really impressive last time, isn't it? I'm a bigger fan of James de Berlay, though. Are you? I have been for a long while, yeah. Why has Paul Townend not picked him? Uh, I don't know. I really, well, really you tell him why that. he's on the wrong one then. Uh, well, I'm, hopefully he's going to be on the wrong one. Um, yeah, I, I just really liked him um, a couple of seasons ago. He, he really ran him in the champion hurdle first time out for the yard, which was like, really unusual. And OK, he didn't, he didn't handle that, but he finished second next time in a great 
grade one over three mile at Punchestown, and I backed him for the Turners then. <laughs> it's been the wrong year, and then he missed a year. And uh, I think, you know, I, I don't think he could have done any better than he did first time out over fences. He jumped really well, uh, set a good gallop. I mean, I know, you know, you haven't beaten much. You know, in, in, this sort of thing happens when you get these Mullins novice chasers winning at long odds on. But I think it was a really, really good start. And I'm hoping that he's going to turn into a top class horse. Now, he's got a very good one to beat in Mighty Potter, but I think Mighty Potter's a soft ground horse. Uh, and I, I wonder whether he'll be quite as good on this sort of ground as he was, as he was last time. Okay, five to two, James de Berlay with Paddy Power. Is Paul Keeley right? I hope not. I think Mighty Potter's going to be very hard to beat. Uh, he has won on yielding to soft ground, yielding ground as well. He's two from two over fences. I thought it was a cracking performance in the Drinmore. He made one of the uh, best of the season, I would say. Yeah, I agree. Visually. With you. He made one bad mistake. Did he? Was it four he out? Two, yeah. Or two yeah, bad he mistakes. He over jumped it a little bit, yeah. Jack Kennedy doesn't get overexcited as you know about anything ever anything. in his whole life in ever. his whole life but he gets very excited about mighty potter i don't believe and it. he was glowing jack praise. jack i know i nearly dropped the phone on the way home i wasn't <laughs> there that night and uh, jack was he was can you do a jack strong. kennedy impression for us what did he say on the way home no no he just got he was very very strong and very animated as hello well. kevin and the, and, and the voice actually rose as well oh that god night. Yeah. We have an article on our hands. So, uh, no, Mighty Potter, I was very impressed with him. It was a strong renewal, obviously, as well. And Gallard and Manil had loads of experience after being a uh, real good novice form last year, placed in an Irish national too. So he was the most experienced horse going into the race. And obviously, Bambridge, he's finished third. I thought he's come out and run a cracker, as we thought. Mm. We were giving him a good shout yesterday. I thought the race would be run to suit Bambridge, but... I knew they got a good gallop, but uh, I thought, no, he, he ran a cracker yesterday. I agree with Paul about the Turners, but I think Mighty Potter will be very hard to beat. His only bad run was at Cheltenham last year, but I'd say it was just a race too much for him. He was a big, shelly horse. He looked, for one of Gardens, he was a bit light and tucked up in Cheltenham. And uh, see him walking around the parade ring. I went off and looking at him in the parade ring in, the, in Cheltenham last year. Uh, but for me, it's Mighty Potter all the way. Gallard and Manil, very good horse, obviously. Came out Frank the Farm, winning the grade one over three miles. Leperstown, Christmas time, but I think the drop back in trip, just Mighty Potter, might just have more gears for him. And James the Burla, Daryl Jacob was bull, very bullish about his chances yesterday when he won the grade one, of course, on El Fabliola. But Mighty Potter, Davy Russell, Gordon Elliott. Kevin Ryan, I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm it's usually big... dangerous in you and I. Agree. Yeah, it doesn't usually work out well, does I it? I know. I can only apologise to Gordon, Davy, and all involved with <laughs> Mighty Potter. Yeah. Myself and Kevin Ryan agree that he's going to win here. Nina, are you in the Mighty Potter yeah, camp? Yeah, I thought he improved a lot from Down Royal. I wouldn't have fancied him for the Dream or looking at the Down Royal run. He improved a lot. I think he's a big baby. That's one thing that Jack said when he pulled up after winning the Dream Moor. He had to go to the front a bit early to let him roll a little bit because they've gone a bit slow. So I think that really taught him a bit. He, he pecked a few times as well. I think the concentration wasn't great that day, but he still went on and won really well. Um, I feel today maybe he'll get a better lead and it might keep the concentration a bit better. And uh, yeah, I'd imagine James de Burley will probably head on in front and he'd have something to aim at. But James de Burley is very unexposed, so it'll be interesting to see how he copes with with Mighty Potter. I think it's going to be an interesting race. I don't think it's all Mighty Potter, but James de Burley for me would be the big danger to him. But it is Mighty Potter is your number one choice. I, I do think so. I think he's on an upward curve and I think there's a lot more to come from him going okay. forward. So it is three votes for Mighty Potter against one vote, but a very important vote for James de Burley. For Paul Keeley, we're on to the third race on the card. It is the 210. It is the Labrooks Dublin chase and it is probably the least entertaining grade one of the Dublin Racing Festival. And it sees a very, very warm order in the shape of Blue Lord, who's only ever actually been beaten once over fences, would you believe? Paul, we'll keep this short and sweet. Yeah, he just wins, doesn't he? Um, hope, yeah, hopefully he does anyway, because, you know, it's, the champion chase has suddenly become rather fascinating, mm. isn't it? So, you know, and he's going to throw his hat in the ring, I suppose, and, and won't be far off favourite if he's really impressive. Um, and he, and he ought to be, really. He ought to beat that lot, really, isn't he? I think So Royal might follow him home. That'd be nice to see. He's got, you know, he, he, loves, a bit of, he loves a bit of quick ground. Uh, jumps really well when he goes over fences. I mean, obviously, he mixes the both. And he's, a, he's been a good old warrior for Alan King for a long while, hasn't he? Mm. But, you know, but, Probably unlucky to not to win a champion chase a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, he's, un, you know, he's unlucky not to, have, you know, not, to, not to have won a grade one. But he's a really, really solid horse. Mm. Mm. He's one to four. 
Is he one that you'd be putting in multiples or would you just be just I watching? No, I just watch it. Oh. I don't get involved in races like that. Okay. One to four, Kevin. Simple as that. Simple, yeah. He wins, doesn't he? As you say, it's not the most exciting of grade ones of the weekend, but Blue Lord, he was very impressive here at Christmas time. He's been beaten once over fences. Very hard to knock him. Crazy Alan King having a runner. I think it's his first run in Ireland since 2018. And I think Alan King's last winner, I stand to be correct, it was back in, in Ireland, sorry, uh, was back in 2008, I think. So, great to see Alan King what running through so Royal. Not a Scooby Doo. <laughs> 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 Not a clue. Uh, but uh, look, it should be straightforward for Blue Royal. Blue Lord, sorry. What will be second? <laughs> Love to see Dunn Vegan finish in second. Uh, but probably not good enough a bit, a bit like Paul uh, probably say Alan King's horse maybe finish runner up Nina nice to have a bet in. yeah I can't add any more to the Blue Lord has been brilliant this season and uh, he can do it over 2-4 and, and 2 miles so mm. he's a really good stayer as well and uh, yeah I can't re really see anything that in that to beat him today unless something stupid happens <laughs> yeah good we didn't waste too much time on it that was the Labrox Dublin chase it should be extremely straightforward for Blue Lord Barring accents, moving on to the 240, it is the Bulmers Leprosound Handicap Chase. And this is, if the, if the previous race we previewed was straightforward, this is anything but Kevin O'Ryan. This is wide open. Uh, Indigo Breeze is currently hanging on to favouritism from Mascada, who I fancy very strongly. What do you fancy? Yeah, she's a big chance, Mascada. And obviously, when she won the Tim Duggan at Limerick over Christmas time, she beat Rebel Gold, who came out and won the Dan and Joan Moore, beating Don Vegan, who we're going to see in the grade one. Rebel Gold, I thought, ran well on ground that probably wasn't to his strengths yesterday. Likes a bit easier ground, uh, a bit slower ground. <coughs> Mascada, a big chance. One, I think, could be very dangerous. Number 12, I like the way you're thinking. Gavin Cromwell, Mark Walsh. Pulled up in the pretend the last day. He's one of them horses, isn't he? He's, he's just one of, one of them. Horses. He could pop up and uh, eats. He, for me, it's a very, very open race. I do agree with you. Mascada is a big chance, but uh, I will take a chance with number 12. I like the way you're thinking for the Red Hot Gavin Cromwell team. It is a Red Hot Gavin Cromwell stable, but I know, Kills, from talking to you yesterday, you were doing your tipping beside me in the press room before you went out in the lash, and you are very, 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 very sweet on Indigo Breeze. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's unlike me to get stuck into a favourite in, uh, in a big handicap like this. Oh, are you but, okay? But, uh, yeah, it's funny enough, I did last year as well with Birchdale, who, who won it, but, but um, yeah, it's, it's just that form line at Cheltenham. We haven't seen him since November. He ran three-quarter length second to, to the real whacker, uh, who's come out and won the Dipper since, and has an official mark in Britain of 153. And he was off levels with him, and he runs in a handicap here of 133. And he could be, he could just be really, really well handicapped. I mean, the real whacker, whacker's been put in the Gold Cup as well, mm -hmm. uh, as well as well as all the novice races. So, you know, and he is a very, very decent horse. And to to get that close to him, he's obviously got to come out and show his worth again. But, but yeah, I think he could be thrown in. Have you backed him yet? Uh, I have, yes. What price? Uh, only 92. No, never okay. got any bigger. You're happy with that four to one now at the moment, so yeah, you have a little I, I, bit of value. I think it's perfectly fair. Okay. The reason I fancy Mascada is because I think she would have won very impressively at uh, Fairy House, but for falling at second last. And then when she went to Limerick at Christmas, she she did everything right. She just looked like she was she was just in good form with herself. She jumped well. Rebel Gold obviously was second. Won the won the Damour at Fairy House. I think <coughs> Mascada to me, she's gone up to one four one now. But I think. I think she's virgin on greater class. I think she's very good mascara. She's one of my strongest fancies of the day. Nina, what do you like? I like Vanilla of Gavin Cromwell. Yeah. For a different mm -hmm. one in the Gavin Cromwell yard. I think obviously the stable is flying. He's dropping from greater company. He's been battling up against Gavin Gallop and Deschamps and Fury Road obviously ran really well as well. So I just think he's dropping back uh, he's dropping back into handicap company here today and I feel that if Keith gets him into a rhythm, I know it's two five, but He'll stay very well, and uh, he's an Alba Barrett winner, and you know I think he could easily have a bit be, be unexposed a little bit in the handicap. And Nina Carberry, he's been very well backed. I don't know if it's the Carberry money that's down, but 16 to one into 11 to one Vanillier. Yeah, he's one to watch. I think he's yeah. definitely for me getting back to handicap company from being contesting against the likes of Gallop and Deschamps and Fury Road, who ran really well here yesterday. So that for me. Vanillier for Nina Carberry. It is, I like the way you're thinking for Kevin O'Ryan. It is a strong, confident vote for Indigo Breeze for Paul Keeley. 
and a strong, confident vote for Muscat from me. So you're probably more confused now than you were when you started watching the show. But moving on to the big one, and it is the big one. It is going to be an absolute corker. It is the 310 at Leopard Sound. It is the Chanel Pharma Irish Champion Hurdle. And Kevin O'Ryan, I don't think I've been looking forward to a race as much as this for a long, long time. It's Honeysuckle v. Stateman v. Boban. First of all, don't give it away, but have you a strong opinion? I do, but it's a head and heart scenario, isn't it, really? Well, give us the head. The head says state, man. Right. He's the younger, he's the younger horse, he's the improving horse. He's, what, is he rated right two pounds lower than Honeysuckle? Uh, he's beat Vauban, his stable companion, who I think will improve from the run, but I don't think he'll improve enough to beat state, man, who had the run under his belt here in the Madison Hurdle at Christmas time. But state, man... I just think, my head is saying statement, my heart is saying honeysuckle. Going back to honeysuckle, that was the strongest Hatton's Grace she ran in uh, last year. Like, you must remember, she's beaten Ronald Pump with the greatest of respect, good handicapper, and that's about it. But Whoa, whoa. No, no, but he is a, he is a good handicapper. Three-miler. Three-miler, exactly. Like. He was second in the stairs hurdle. Ah, uh, yeah, hello, sir, Jesus. Yes, stairs, yes. we're talking about champion hurdle. <laughs> yeah, stairs hurdle and the uh, champion hurdle. He's not well a done, handicapper. Yeah. Two different races. Okay, okay, go on. You, uh, were you out last night? You sure you said you had no pints last night? I feel like I was. Two young kids. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. No in problem deep at all. There. No problem at all. I'm at the losing my train of thought now, actually. No. You were saying... Um, Honeysuckle, right? Her run in the Hatton's Grace. Her run the Hatton's Grace. The race was set up for two proven stairs. Obviously, Classical Dream was a hell of a good horse. And T. Hoopo, who probably was being run over the wrong trip last year. And he's obviously come out and bolted up in the gal. My, he's a worthy favourite now in the stairs hurdle as well. I thought Honeysuckle, like most people, had put the race to bed. But she did set it up. Honeysuckle did set it up for two proven stairs. I'd love to see her win. I think everybody here would love to see her win. The reception, the place at go do Like here. the Noli all over again. Exactly, it would. But for me, I think Head says, State Man, he's an improving horse. I don't think he's good enough to beat Constitution Hill, but I've seen a Constitution Hill so far. Can't see anything getting near him if he pitches up in, in, in one piece in Cheltenham. But uh, today it's State Man for State me. State Man today. Yeah. Well, one man who knows State Man very well is Ruby Walsh. We're paying extra faces in multiple races at the Dublin Racing Festival. Log on to the Paddy Power app now to find out more. Paddy Power. Ruby Walsh, state man, favourite to beat Honeysuckle. Is that a surprising comment if I'd said that to you a couple of months ago? Would you have been like, what? Oh, of course you would. I mean, um, she was the reigning champion hurdler. Before the Hatton's Grace, you would have said, yeah, she'd be favourite until she runs in the champion hurdle and depending on what constitution Hill, Hill has done then, who knows what will happen that day. But uh, she did get beaten by Tahupu and Classical Dream. She finished third. The glass, the gloss, I suppose, has probably slightly gone off her. Statement looks the younger, improving horse. And he's favoured. He's in great form. I'd say he's improved again since Christmas. Uh, Vauban is in the race. He's improved a little too. And Honeysuckle is still honeysuckle. Um, animals are not motor cars. They can all be slightly under on any given day. Uh, she's a wonderful mare, but uh, I think the man will beat her. And you can hear more from Ruby Walsh and the team in Paddy Power on the From the Horse's Mouth podcast. Paul Keeley, honeysuckle. Kevin, Kevin's hard to say in honey, honeysuckle. We all know our hearts are say, screaming honeysuckle, okay? But your head is saying the same thing. Yeah, I think, you know... She's getting seven pound, remember? So State Man probably needs to up it a little bit to beat her if she would, if if she runs to even her best of last season. Her best of last season wasn't as good as her previous season. That's the, that's the only issue is whether she's slightly on the way down. But it wasn't it wasn't actually a bad run first time out. The season she got beat. I mean, it, one of those things when you when you have this massive uh, winning run, it's always very disappointing when a horse gets beat. But she's actually run perfectly reasonably well, and. You know, she's got to give her seven pounds. So she, I don't think it's an absolute gimme. And obviously I want her to win because I'm here. And if you're here, you've got to want her to win because you know what's going to happen afterwards, don't you? You know what I mean? But uh, by the same token, I don't think she's out of it. I don't think you should be writing her off for this race. Like Kev said, I don't think anything's going to beat Constitution Hill. I think he's a, he's a proper monster. But State Man's still got it to prove to be odds on uh, to beat her, I think. So this is interesting now, because you spent most of the last three seasons telling everybody that Honeysuckle <laughs> wasn't a legend of the sport. Right, no, hang on a minute. No, 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 let me finish. Like, whoa, 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 let me finish, right? You did, and, and you're in punches down I, in I, April. I'll explain this. Okay, go I, on. I, 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 I'll obviously explain this to you. Right? It all depends on whether you're a romantic or a numbers man, isn't it? Right, and I've been married for 30 years. I can tell I've never been a romantic. <laughs> and 
what she's done in winning 16 on the, ba 16 on the bounce uh, has shown how tough she is, how courageous she is. What she's actually done in terms of performances, in numbers on the track, is nothing special. It is nothing out of the ordinary. That is the whole point. She's got a top racing post rating of 165. There will be 30, 40 horses in the last 10 years that have done that, and a lot of them would only be grade two horses, geldings, because obviously they would have to give her seven pounds. So if you're actually talking about what she's done in terms of pure performance, then it isn't, then she's not great. But what she's done for the game is great. Absolutely, but every horse is different. And just because Honeysuckle is not like Sprinter Sacra and doesn't win by 20 lengths, just because she wins by a couple of lengths, how do we know? Obviously, she was beaten in the Hatton's Grace, so that was obviously... Well, she has won by wide margins in her time as well, though. Yeah, she has, yeah. And that's the point. She's not, she was never a horse that used to pull herself up, was she? Okay. I know, so I think, she, I think she gives it all, and she's as good as she is, and that's it. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't, you know... But if you, if you talk in terms of pure track performance, then a top RPR of 165 is not great. And it's that simple. It's not, it's, it's not, there's no argument about it, really. Okay. What age are you? 54. Okay. In your time in racing, would Honeysuckle make it into the top 10 horses you've ever seen or the top 20? No, not even close. Not even close to the top 20? No. Top 50? Yeah, she'd be in there. She'd make the top 50, but yeah. she wouldn't make the I top mean, 20. I'd, I'd take some time working it out, wouldn't I? But, but she wouldn't get anywhere near the top 20, no. Ooh. Is that a bit harsh, Nina Carberry? Ah, it is a bit harsh, but she can only beat what's up against her as well. It's not her fault that these horses haven't come along until now. So it'll be really a big day for her to really prove herself against probably the up and coming, you know, horses that are, realistically, as you say, she hasn't really beating, beaten a statement yet and a Constitution Hill, so... Is Benny to do not a statement or... or a like, yeah, well, she, she was, and she did it. She did beat her, do you yeah. know? So, um, it's... No, she wasn't. Benny to do wasn't uh, that she, good? She was, she like. was. Um, but listen, I think she's always fallen in in the Hatton's Grace and she's won, but this year she had a lot of higher rated horses to beat this year and she didn't do bad she finished third she ran a good race she's always come on a lot and looked like a totally different mare in Leprosam and I see I feel that she's getting a little bit of bad press about her Hatton's Grace run but I thought it was a really good run from what she's done before falling in in front of Ronald Pump so I think there could be a big difference today in what we see but I think the tactics is going to be major to this race today I'm wondering will Rachel dictate it from the front and really make it her own race or will Paul Townend do that? I think it's all about tactics today. Um, Vauban is definitely going to improve from that run, and there's going to be it's going to be a three-horse race for me. And I'm just are the two going to go at it in front, and is Vauban going to come and beat the, the two of them? You know, it's hard to know. Well, I was. What do you think of the tactics? I was lying in bed last night, Kevin O'Ryan. I was very tired, right? And I was looking through this race, and the longer I was looking at it, the more I was thinking to myself, Vauban might win this race. I said, <laughs> stop. Just go to sleep. I thought you'd have more interesting things to do, lying in bed at night, <laughs> rather than thinking about the Irish champion. Now my wife watches the show, so be careful, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I was. I, and I was, I was looking back at the run of Christmas, and I know my up and the partner, Johnny Deneen, would probably walk naked around Leperstown if Vauban won. He gives him absolutely no chance. But I just look back at that run, and to jump so poorly, and to do what he did, mm. And I know my, my own boss, Richard Forrestal, our Ireland editor, doesn't like juveniles in their second season and doesn't fancy Vauban. And most people, most real true judges, don't fancy Vauban. But he's just a little bit different, this guy. He's probably the most impressive Triumph Hurdle winner I've seen since probably Defi Desai. I think he's got a big chance, Vauban. Yeah, look, I can see your angle, but I'd be kind of in the same rank as it's hard for a... Yeah, because you're clever and I'm not, that's well, why. Well, I wouldn't, I would never be accused of being clever now. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I just, what do you think I, the tactics? What do you think? That is happen? actually very interesting, the way... What's going to happen? I'd love to, make it? I think if Rachel had ridden maybe Honeysuckle for speed, she'd have beaten, she might, she probably would have beaten the two horses. Yeah, in the, and in we wouldn't be talking race. about... Exactly. But like, as we said, we're going over all ground, but that was the strongest Hatton's Grace. She has run it. And she's probably ran to that point that she's done. Well, she probably has this thing. To be fair, when you actually look back at it, she's not beaten all that far again by one who's a multiple grade one winner classical Her dream. Still and secondly, now T. Hoopo is an awardy favourite and a deserved favourite for the uh, 
for the stairs hurdle too. But the tactics that day played into the strengths of stairs. Uh, maybe if Honeysuckle was ridden a little bit more conservatively that day, uh, she'd have done the two stairs for speed. What do you think, Paul? I'm not 100% certain about that. I mean, like, you know, going over old ground, aren't we? She just, she's run right up to her level from mm. last year yeah. and got beat. I mean, it, it, it's just as simple as that, really. If she runs right up to her level, then State Man's probably got to find one or two pounds more than, more than he's done so far. Like, you know, and he, obviously, being the up-and-comer, it's quite likely that he will. Mm. So, you know, he's, he's, he's in the right place in the market, but I don't think it's an absolute gibby for him. Mm. Right, it's decision time. In one word or two, if you fancy statement, what wins, Nina? I'm going to stick with Honeysuckle. I think she'll improve a lot coming back here today. And if Rachel kind of makes it and makes her own race, she'll get to the Tate and, yeah, Honeysuckle for me. One vote for Honeysuckle. I know you're going yeah. to give your vote to Honeysuckle. Yeah. Kevin O'Ryan? Statement. Probably just statement for me, but if I have another look, maybe it will turn into Vauban. But just have a word with me after the show, will you, Kevin? Because I can't be fancy in Vauban. Anyway, that is an eagerly awaited Chanel Farmer Irish Champion Hurdle. And before we move on to Fasal Vega in the Tattersall Ireland Novice Hurdle, let's hear about the race and post app. <laughs> question here says, do you ever wonder what might have been had Annie not fallen at the last hurdle? She'd have won. I think that's a fair answer. Um, but this is a good question. Not Did sure Benny would have. No? You don't think so? Not certain. Okay. I think she was getting tired. Okay. I hope she would have. What's the running? Is it a furlong? Oh, it is, yeah. It's every uphill. Bit, every bit of a furlong. She needed to jump to win now. and She might have got home, but I did think that we were... Needing Treading water. Yeah. He's the first time I've seen that. I can't believe that. He doesn't think Benny to do would have won the day she fell at the last. I thought she was an absolute certainty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on to the 340, it is the Tattersalls Ireland Novice Hurdle. Like Kevin O'Ryan, this is one of the reasons you've been brought back because you teased everybody yesterday, okay? You gave them, we weren't even talking about the race and you offered your opinion on this race and you said you don't think Facile Vega is going to win and you fancy high definition. So people are watching now because of that. You just explain to everybody why high definition is going to win here. Yeah, I got a bit of stick on Twitter yesterday because I said that maybe the Cheltenham or the bumper form last year mightn't have been that strong. But look, it's all about opinion. Uh, we like to try and store a bit of... Uh, it, uh, different opinion as well. It's H1T. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as I did say, that take out Facile Vega, what did American Mike beat last year? And there has to be a question mark over the bumper form. Now, Facile Vega has been brilliant, but I'm putting the old flat uh, cap back on me now and high definition. I know he needs to improve jumping wise, but I thought it was a very satisfactory round of jumping considering it was his first start. He would have had very little schooling done when you think at the time frame that he was uh, was the October Hurston training mm. sale. He wouldn't have seen too many flights of hurdles down in Ballydale, would he, before he went to Joseph's. Uh, so he was obviously bought at the Hurston training sale late October. He wins here at Christmas time, and he would, you know, he wouldn't have been a, a, a huge. He'd have had plenty of schooling done, but obviously in a short turn of, uh, turnaround of time. But he just got beaten at Tattersall's Gold Cup. He was winter favour for the Derby. Uh, back in his three-year-old career, Hookham only beat him. Was it Hookham that just beat him in the Tarsal mm. Gold Cup last year? I know. In the in the coronation. Sorry, in the coronation. Yeah, and uh, this maybe his form just petered off a bit as well. But look, I'm only playing devil's advocate here. What Fasal Vegas two to one on or whatever, he does deserve to be favourite. But I think a high class horse from the flat. He's probably one of the highest rated horses, is he, to go jumping from the flat? Yeah, I was cha chatting years, to Paul, somebody it? yesterday, I can't remember who it was, but somebody told me that the highest one they could, the other one they could find was 115 Palisator, who went to Gordon, oh, actually. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, obviously, you go further back, Royal Gate, obviously, won and got disqualified mm. in the Ascot Gold Cup, didn't he? And then mm. came out and won a champion hurdle. Um, Alderbrook was very good on the flat as well. I can't remember how high he was. But, yeah, there was, he was a good two winner there. Mm. So 13 to 2, Kevin, high definition. You think that's probably a little bit of value? I do think it's a bit of value because, look, we're here to give an opinion and 
as you say, stir a little bit as well. And facile vague, it deserves to be favourite. But there is plenty of strength and depth, and I just think high definition. He's open to more improvement. He does need to improve in his jumping, but what he, the level of ability he had in the flat, I think he could give Fasal Vega plenty to do today. Excellent. And I'll probably get plenty of stick off. We like that. So no, that's fine, Kevin. I'm that's well fine. used to it. Look, yeah. you're on a 13 to 2 shot. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Thank you're you biting the opinion. <laughs> you're taking on and odds on favourite. <laughs> and Fasal Vega is currently the 1 to 2 favourite, Nina. I'm a massive Fasal Vega fan. I think people are just trying to pick holes, and we'll come to the man who's trying most to pick holes in, our form, in his form in a, mo in a moment. <laughs> but I think Fasal Vega is actually a good price at 1 to 2. I don't know if he's a good price, but I just like I love watching this horse. Um, I know he didn't look overly impressive the last day, but he still went and won, even though he was very keen the whole way. He jumped pretty well. Um, he's still learning, obviously. Uh, needs to improve again. But he, wa he wasn't as impressive as he was in Fairy House the time before. Mm. And I feel that if they can anchor him a bit of high definition, makes the running again, which I don't really know would he, because he was very laboursome in front, wasn't he, mm. Kevin? Um, he needs to start to travel a bit more high definition, but Vassal Vega needs something like that in front of him to get an anchor on him, I think, and because uh, he got lit up that day. So if he can, I suppose, reserve the energy a little bit, I think we've a lot more to come from him at the end, but I think um, high definition is going to have to improve a lot, I think, to beat him. Um, there's obviously other horses in there. Dark Raven is unexposed as well. But uh, for me, Fasil Vega is the one they all have to beat. And um, if he can put that performance behind him the last day and uh, relax a bit more today, I think there's a lot more for him, from him to come. Right, here we go. Here we go. You've spent weeks at it now, so go on, give us well, another uh, few minutes. Uh, no, but, Why is Fasil Vega not the second coming? Well, Kev Kev's said, almost said it all, hasn't he? I mean, the, but first of all, the bumper form, you know, it's perfectly plausible that he was a very, very good winner of an average champion bumper, but the number of but winners... we don't know yet. Yeah, we no, don't no, know. No. James's gate hasn't ran. Listen... Yeah, but, and, and Redemption Day is injured. They were probably the after American yeah, but Mike. You, 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 yeah, but, yeah, but that, that's all subjective, isn't it? That's just, that's just your opinion. What we have seen is the horses that have run... Gary Moore's the race run, has The race has produced far fewer winners at a much lower strike rate than it has produced in any of the previous 10, ten years. Right? So there are question marks over the form. It doesn't mean the winner isn't a very, very good horse. But all we've seen him do so far is get an easy lead in, first of all, in a race that nobody wanted to get near him. Second, second of all, he got an easy lead against Ilete Tomp, who's probably not in Willie's top 15 novice hurdlers. And uh, the third was never put in a race at all and probably should have finished second. She came out and won. She came out and won, but she's only rated 130. Like, you know what I mean? And she probably should have finished second. He's only won four lengths from Ilete Tomp. Yesterday, Willie's ran all his really, really good two-mile hurdlers, two-mile chases against each other. Why isn't he running a good one against this one? Uh, I, just, I just wonder, why, why not? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have a crack at high definition, and even if he wins, I'm going to still have a crack at him. Yeah, hey, he put it there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're entitled to your opinion, which is a both well, wrong. Yes. We've, and you know what? We probably will be wrong, but... No, 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 you can't, no, no, you can't take both sides. We have to take both sides. If Passive Fake beats high definition, should he go and run on the flat then and just completely... <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you that. what, you laugh at me, right? But again, flat ha uh, hat back on me. Fasil Vega wouldn't half bolt up in the maid. He's loads of gears, to be fair to him. You go around the bridle, mile and a half maiden. And it wouldn't be the... Yeah, could see him in Ascot horse maybe in a couple of years' time. You never know. OK, so it is two votes for Fasil Vega and two confident enough votes, more confident <laughs> than I thought for high, for high definition, in our Tattersalls. Ireland novice hurdle. It's going to be interesting, if nothing else, any of it. And listen, lads, the very best of luck to you. And the best of luck to you as well. Right. Well, it's your luck. It's one to two. Like you know, it's not going to make or break me. Uh, moving on to the penultimate race on the card. I didn't it say is. it yesterday, by the way. Did you not say it oh, yesterday? I, didn't. I, had it, I had it in my head all had day. You? Do not say when you come to the second last race, the penultimate race. <laughs> Kevin O'Ryan has shares in the word penultimate. But moving on to the penultimate race on the card, it is the Festina Lente Charity Liffey Handicap Hurdle. One of the greatest handicap hurdles in Ireland over the years. It was the Labrook, it was the Schweppes, it was the Boilsport, it was all these different hurdles. Now it is the Liffey Handicap Hurdle. And it sees a very, very warm order in Gaelic Warrior, Paul Keeley. Now, this is not your kind of thing. Back in a horse as short as this, seven to five at the moment, Gaelic Warrior, in a handicap hurdle. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the one issue with him is, is the uh, left-handed track, isn't it? Uh, he edged out to his right all the way round at, at Cheltenham last year and just getting chinned off a mark of 129. 
Uh, and he's come out this season, he's edged to his right both races, um, won them ridiculously easily. And it's probably the, the Irish handicap is probably the only one who believes he's only worth a mark of 143. On Racing Post ratings, we've actually got him two pound higher than Faso Vega. Wow. Um, so he's, he could be absolutely thrown in, but he does edge to his right and he's given chunks of weight to the juvenile in the race, common practice, who I thought was a fair each way bet against him, given the extra places. Uh, he, he's, he's been behind um, Lossy Mouth and Blood Destiny, um, beating a fair way both times, but he's running off a mark in the, in the, in the low 120s, um, sorry, 129 I think he is, but getting 12 pound weight for age as well. Uh, and I just thought he'll it, it, be in the frame, whatever happens to Gaelic Warrior. Okay, that's common practice for Paul Keeley. I like a sneaky one in here, Kevin. I could see the artist formerly known as Bally Adam run the big race for Henry and Rachel, coming back fresh, well handicapped on old form. Mm. I could just have this sneaking suspicion this has been the plan for a while. You could be right. <laughs> but I'm wrong. <laughs> I wouldn't be agreeing with you. What do you uh, like? Um, look, Gaelic Warrior, he was entered in the grade one as well, Fasal Vegas race, but Willie's elected to come here instead of that. Obviously, it's a massive pot as well. He could be anything. He could be easily a grade one horse and handicap company, but archive footage, I think, back in 1999 was the last horse to carry, to win this race, carrying any more than 11.5. I think he'd 11.8, maybe I stand to be corrected on that. And I think there's been one or two at 11.4, 11.5 to win this race since. And it's a long, long time ago since uh, 1999. But this horse could be exceptional, but I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to throw two out. Uh, I think this should be renamed the Charles Burns race because he's won in, what, three out of the last five years, say, for argument's sake. Try and win it. All those years, he's very l relatively lightly raced. We saw Charles Grosny running a cracker yesterday, just got beat by Percival de Galois. Uh, all those years with no weight in his back, Philip taking the five off. And another one, there's definitely a big pot in this horse, is Paul Fahey's number nine man of work. Now, I'm, yes. they're probably not good enough to beat Gaelic Warrior. Gaelic big Warrior chance. will probably go and win, but just throwing two out against the field. I thought man of work, man or work, sorry. He's a five-year-old. He ran a blind and a good handicap hurdle at Fairy House. And uh, Paul Fahey, very shrewd man. Uh, he's a Fahey, so they're all shrewd. And, uh, but man of work and all those years, those two against the field for me, I'm not saying Gaelic Warrior is not going to win. He could be a grade one horse in uh, handicap company, but I'll throw those two up against the field. Excellent. Nina, what do you like? Yeah, I'm the same with Kevin. I think all those years could be definitely one that's been kept aside. He hasn't had, he's had a few breaks along his way. He's still, he's a nine year old, very unexposed, lightly raced horse. Could easily just be set up for today. Had a run under his belt, so he's coming here with fit and ready. Uh, another one at the bottom as well is uh, Hey Johnny. He, he mm. was a nice hurdle winner in Turles the last day. And mm. I think um, he's had a lovely way, 10-2, Danny Mullins rides. And uh, yeah, he could be one to keep an eye on as well. Obviously, Gaelic Warriors, we've said all about him, but for those, for me, those are the two that have a bit of value. Yeah, it adds Gaelic Warriors' presence in this race, certainly adds loads of intrigue. And it's going to be fascinating to see how he gets on. That is the Liffey Handicap Hurdle of 410. And moving on to the final race on the card. And it is my strongest fancy of the entire Dublin Racing Festival. It's the Coolmore sponsored Santiago Irish EBF Mayor's Bumper. It's a grade two. And your current six to four favourite is fun, fun, fun. But Paul Keeley, I don't think she will be winning because I've thought all week that Lily de Berlay is the best bet of the Dublin Racing Festival. And my reasoning, reasoning is this, okay? She won the race last year, which is hard to believe. I, I wonder has it ever been done, where a horse wins a bumper one year and comes back and wins the same bumper the next year. It's, it's, it's unbelievable to think it could be done. But I remember last year, do you remember there was a blanket finish in the race? And I think I had tipped actually the second, battling Bessie in the race. And I remember being absolutely gutted and I had to work then and I had to go down to Stuart Crawford and I was gutted. I remember going down and I said, Stuart, like she's a massive price, like it was a big surprise. This one the best horse I've ever had, he said. You know, he really was glowing in his, in his praise for Lily de Berlay. And I was like, oh, right. That perked my ears up. Then she goes to Navin for the list of bumper, right? She ran a remarkable race because she was on the inside down the back straight. Then she was moved to the outside. She hung a little bit. She absolutely flew home to finish second to Jatara. Jatara has since finished second high definition, who you both think will beat Facile Vega. Then Jatara finished second after a diamond last week in the Salarina Mayor's Novice Hurdle at Fairy House. And I think Lily de Berlay is a better horse than Jatara because I thought she was very unlucky not to win at, at Navan. 
And I just think she's obviously more experienced than the ones she's running against here. I think she's the best mare in the race, and I think she should be favoured, and I think she'll win. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> I really, really, really did struggle to stay awake through that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that there's a big difference between the Irish and English when it comes to bumpers. You lot love bumpers, don't you? And I don't, well, you I don't bumper, understand, right? I do not understand why. It's bumper. jump racing for God's sake. They jump <clears throat> obstacles. Like, you know, in England, we go home before the bumper. Yeah, but you just can't win uh, bumpers. You've no interest yes, in bumpers. Yeah, I've got, like, no, got no interest. So, yeah, yeah. I've no idea what you said anyway. But if, if you're right, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he, he was planning that speech for the last two days, Paul. Practicing last night in bed. Well, look, did you, yeah. I, I honestly did stop listening. <laughs> oh, I will believe it, Jay. You never listen to me anyway. Kevin O'Ryan, am I talking bonkers as usual? What did you say again? I'm only messaging you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can we get I, a different panel next year for this show? <laughs> Uh, what do you like? You're not talking uh, whatever you're talking now. No, you make a lot of sense. And actually, that bumper really worked out well last year. Take out Battling Bessie. Liberty Dance. Liberty Dance, Harmony Maker. I know Harmony Maker was far too Astro deep. Diamond. Astro Diamond as well. Nikinia Willie, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Win a couple as well during mm -hmm. the summer too. Uh, yeah, I do see where you're coming from. Do you fancy her? I, I don't have a strong opinion about the race. My, I fancy Jessica Harrington's. Maria Philip, Philippe, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I think Marie she could Philip improve Hallelujah. a lot from the run. I heard she walked well the other day. And, uh, she got very tired that day, didn't she? She did, yeah, she, she did. She big. Yes, and I'm told she's after improving a good bit from it. That is a tentative vote in it. I don't have a strong opinion about it. You've obviously got two willies as well. You have fun, 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 won a bumper in mm -hmm. Sligo. Going back a little bit now, and I got plenty of stick yesterday over facile mode, but anyway, how and ever. These bumpers are so hard to put together. Put together, aren't they? And 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 compare their form. Because surely Lily de Brule is the best form. Like finish no, second to no, Jadara. She yeah, she she's the one to beat. They yeah. all have to improve to beat Absolutely. her. Absolutely. But um, what's interesting is the likes of Fancy um, Fancy Girl, who goes and wins in Cork and looks like she's on good ground because of how quick she picks up and and goes. You know, and you don't know how to compare her to Lily like Birdo because you just don't have the form so we are all guessing but you're only looking on the the day or what what they look like and um Patrick Mullen spread fun 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 himself he's going to want to get the best out of her obviously he has the mare in home so he's really wanting to get the best out of her today um I liked ascending what's the um Liz Lawler finished second to fancy girl that day and for me sending what, lark yeah sending lark of liz lawler's she wouldn't have been as wound up as fancy girl that day and i think there's a lot of improvement to come from her now david they all have to beat your your filly and they all have to improve to beat her but there is a lot of there's a lot of form there and uh, it'll be interesting to see well, she sets the, the benchmark, doesn't yeah, she? she? Off the back a, of that a, run last year. It's a pretty year. high benchmark. No, it is definitely, it is, without yeah. doubt. But as we were saying, yes, and Nina said the same thing there. We're not really... Re it's very hard to evaluate the bumper form until they start running in winners' bumpers yeah. and graded bumpers because bumpers here haven't been as competitive, say... No, until now. Until now, really, yeah. because it's a lot of it is it's either Willie or Gordon in mm. the bumpers because we say bumper... Uh, the bumpers... There are a lot of the younger horses are now going down the pint of pint route instead yeah. of back instead of uh, bumpers. So it's it's impossible really to va uh, equate the form until they start taking each other on in winners bumpers. But uh, Paul is definitely going to sleep after all of that now. <laughs> Uh, fun, fun, fun wasn't taken off the bridle, so we don't know how good she exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's true. So yeah. we are. Your filly is worthy fate. Like, I think she should be worthy fate. She should be. Yeah. Because she says, probably yeah, right. Yeah, right. Very much a value on uh, it. You're going to go on ascending lark. Fair way. Don't well, they're still talking. Yeah. Sorry, they're still Outside. talking. 20 uh, something to one. I'll go with Marie, you filly. <laughs> you all right there? Oh, you want to play? I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> Have you any opinion whatsoever? Uh, no, I was asked to put a selection. Yeah, what's your offer? I put a selection in, so I did fun, 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 because it was the easiest to type. But uh, <laughs> please don't back it on my say so. <laughs> That must be a first. A, a, a racing post, one of our star tips are tipping a horse because it was the easiest to type. Fun, fun, fun. All that's left to do now is reveal our naps of day two of the Dublin Racing Festival. And I'll obviously go first. I'll obviously go for Lily de Berlay in the 440. I think she'll win. Paul oh, Keeley, I best bet on day two. I do think Indigo Breeze is potentially thrown in in that 240. Indigo Breeze for Paul Keeley. Kevin Mighty Ryan. Potter. Mighty Potter and Nina Carby. And Vanillier for me. Vanillier at a Vanillier. nice tasty 11 to 1 for Nina there, sir.
glorious portraits there are naps for day two of the Dublin Racing Festival and that is it folks my thanks to Nina for joining us today and to Kevin O'Ryan and Paul Keeley for your presence for the last two days have you enjoyed it more than welcome you having a pint light I will have a point with you later, yeah, yeah, I'll have a point, hopefully, and we can talk all about Lily de Berlay. Yeah. Or high definition. <laughs> or high definition, yeah, absolutely. I tell you what, Paul, we're going to get some stick at this high definition. Oh, true. I can't look at Twitter all day. No, I know, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not on my own today. Anyway. <laughs> it can go down together, lads. Listen, thanks very much for watching. Good morning, Dublin. We'll be back for Good Morning Cheltenham. You'll be with me. You will. I good will. morning, Cheltenham. <coughs> for all five days of Dublin Race Festival, because we'll be there Monday through to Friday, but this was Good Morning Dublin. I've been David Jennings, she's been Nina Carberry, he's been Kevin Ryan, he's been Paul Keeley. Thanks for watching. <laughs>